This just came in. This is the ASUS ROG Crosshair 8 Dark Hero motherboard. This is probably the most sought out X570 motherboard ever since it announced, which was end of last year in 2020 and now going into 2021. Um, it's a very difficult motherboard to get. And when I say that this just came in, literally like five minutes ago, the FedEx guy just handed this to me. I just unboxed it, turned on the camera and started talking. All right, so as you can tell, I have not had a lot of time with this yet. I will not be reviewing this board, okay? Um, there's a couple of reasons why. And I still wanna talk about some of the features that drew me to it, why I decided to buy it for my build and putting this into a really big project coming up and it's gonna be relevant to future content. Okay, so without further ado, let's jump in. Now the first discussion topic I wanna to have is the uh, feature sets and the specs that I was personally looking for when I was buying this board. The first thing I wanna jump into is the fact that I went from uh, ATX to an ITX to an ATX build all within like a year's time. What I missed most was having a lot of USB ports on the back of the motherboard and the ITX just didn't have enough for me. The next thing is I was wanting to get a ATX motherboard with out without the PCH fan. X570 board without the PCH fan because that thing gets really loud randomly. And they're also, at the time when I had the Crosshair 8 Hero, that PCH fan, there's no settings in the BIOS that can allow you to set the fan curves or have control when it turns on, when it turns off. But that thing would ramp up to like five or 6,000 RPM when I'm trying to play games or you know watch a movie or whatever. And it would get really annoying. So there were no other options on the market for an X570 except for two. And those were the ASRock Aqua, it has like a full on water block on it. And then there was the Gigabyte or Aorus Extreme board, but those boards were like $1,000 and at the time was out of my budget. When Asus announced Dark Hero with all the features uh, of the X570 without the fan, I was really happy with that. There are two downsides that I was primarily, uh, that kind of drew my attention to regarding this board is the fact that people were complaining that this board only has two M.2 slots for $450 here in the States. I can, uh, that's a fair point. I am not going to argue with that. Um, especially when, you know, there are companies like uh, Gigabyte who have their X570 lines or B550 lines that have, that support up to three M.2s and also at a cheaper price. Uh, but personally for me, I don't even use three M.2 slots, although it would be a nice to have, but it, it wasn't like a definite must. So two is quite enough for me. And honestly, without the PCH fan, that was really the main point that if not the only one feature that I was looking for on an X570 board. And the other downside was the lack of USB 3.2 Gen 2 by two, which is, which is a 20, basically it's a super speed USB port that supports up to 20 gigabits per second. I'm not gonna jump into the nomenclature, Basically, USB IF has their whole naming scheme with how they rebranded or renamed all the different USB uh, types. But for me personally, I don't really have any devices that even saturate that bandwidth anyways. Even USB 3.2 Gen 1, I was okay with. USB 3.2 Gen 2, I was okay with. You know, obviously that's even fast enough for me. Now USB 3.2 Gen 2 by 2 is I mean, people are complaining that this board doesn't have it for $450. Okay, so I'm all for pushing technology and implementing higher, you know, uh, advanced uh, speeds, higher speeds. But for me, it's not a deal breaker because everything else gives me what I want and I can't even take advantage of this board to its full potential anyways. And the next topic I wanna go over are some of the features that I was personally not looking for, but will be there for some other people who will be looking for it. And uh, one of them being the 16 phase power stages rated at 90 amps on this motherboard, which is 30 amps higher than the predecessor, which was the Crosshair 8 Hero, which was rated at 60 amps. But from just the information I've been skimming online, Apparently the, the, the previous uh, Crosshair 8 Hero motherboard with 60 amps at 16 phase power stage was already plenty 
to push even like a 3950X or a 5950X um, to like 5.0 gigahertz. Then there are new BIOS features for overclocking. Well, I'm not an extreme overclocker. I don't do much of that. So apparently there are new things, new settings that might be beneficial. The last thing I'm gonna talk about are, I guess not really a feature, but rather feature set combination. Basically this motherboard has a really high power delivery, but it's all running off of passive cooling. So on paper, it looks really good. It sounds really good. And also the ratings that I've been seeing on, on verified buyers and purchasers, they seem to be reporting that it's solid. I haven't plugged this in yet, so I will see. I will still, you know, turn on XMP or DOCP and then uh, precision boost and push this thing as high as I can personally get it to it and see how hot this thing gets. Earlier in this video, I mentioned that I was going to be putting this motherboard into a bigger project. And that is essentially a custom Waterloop PC, uh, which I will be using a 5900X, a 2080 Ti. Yes, a 2080 Ti because I was not lucky enough to have landed or bought a 3080, uh, the one that I want. So I'm rocking with what I have. It's fine, 2080 Ti is still a beast right now in 2021. I don't care if the 3070 is, you know, performs the same or overpowers it for half the price, whatever. 2080 Ti is still a 2080 Ti. Um, yeah, so it's going to be put in a Leon Lee 011 Dynamic Mini case. It's a work in progress right now. I still have to figure out the tubes and the routes. I'll keep you guys all updated as the progress, you know, progresses. But uh, yeah, stay tuned for that for uh, future content. And the last thing I want to talk about before I wrap this up is I recently started a Discord server. If you guys are interested in joining that, there are some cool people in there, casual vibes. The reason for this is to create a medium and a community for tech support. Uh, anybody who has questions that I can't answer or don't have time to get to, if you will, through the comments in my videos, because I do see most of them, but I don't have the time to answer all of them in the comments individually, one by one, especially when there are several people who are asking the same questions. And especially when I've already answered those questions, either in the form of a comment, a pinned comment, or in the video, and some people just don't get it. But um, the Discord server is going to be more for that. Uh, and also if I can't answer the questions, there are also other people who are in the server who are also very knowledgeable, much more knowledgeable than me, who can help answer those questions and also their availability too. And uh, yeah, so I just wanna share that with you guys. If you are interested, Discord link will be in the description below. So with that said, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your time tuning in. Like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more content from me. As always, I will catch you in the next one. Peace.